pace. So we joined this one in progress. Both the players with the wingmate rock in play, and we're walking into a concession. Your favorite thing. I love it. Looks like we're heading to game three here. So now we get a good idea. It looks like Jesse Grogan's going to be on the play here for game number three. So we'll take a look at his sideboard right away. Then we'll take a look at Jonathan's, and then we'll take a look at the bills of these decks. A Liliana Vess and El Spesso's champion. Two copies of Issa World Waker, a Duress, a Murderous Cut, a Thought Seize. Two copies of Drowned Sorrow, two copies of Tremocus Command, two copies of Glare of Heresy, a Valor Stance, and a Bat to Nature. So I think definitely on the play, you want your additional copies of Tremocus Command. You're playing with much the same creatures, so it can just lead to some very powerful openings. Glare of Heresy, very good in the mirror match, tons of white creatures. The Elspeth, powerful here. The game drags out. I like Murderous Cut a lot in the matchup. I could also bring in another copy of Valor Stance here. Jesse with one in the main. I like boarding in the second one. Take a look at the sideboard here for Delano. He's got three Drowned Sorrows, two Glare of Heresy, two Thoughtseize, two Back to Nature, two Ultimate Price, two Nissa World Waker, a Murderous Cut, and a Soren Solemn Visitor. A little lighter here on his side of the table. I like the Soren coming in. I like the Murderous Cut, and I like the two copies of Glare of Heresy, but I wouldn't go near Drowned Sorrow. And Ultimate Price is very troubled in this matchup where almost all the threats are cold. It is quite poor in this particular matchup. Take a look at Delano's build. You saw a Wingmate Rock on both sides of the table. Delano has four Wingmate Rocks. Whoa! And... That is one of the best cards in the mirror, if not the best card. Exactly. So now with Jesse on the play, the pressure here is just get on top of Jonathan and kill all the stuff as much as you can. That's the best way to blunt the impact of Wingmate Rock. Uh, Jesse is playing with two copies of his own, but two against four, that, that fight definitely favors Jonathan. So Jesse's game plan here, have a good curve, kill Jonathan's stuff, prevent Raid from triggering, and just put Jonathan on the back foot as much as you can. How many cards are going to surprise you here in, Del in Delano's deck list? You know, four Fleece Main Line, four Death Dealers, four Siege Rhinos, four Anafenses. Not too much of a surprise. There's a Heir of the Wild hanging out, two Surak the Hunt Callers, and the Spells, three Bile Blights, three Heroes Downfalls, two Dramocus Commands, two Gather Courage. Haven't seen much of that outside of Aaron Barish, of course, when we do get to watch him play, and then two copies of Abzan Charm. But those four wingmate rocks means that this is going to be really tough for Jesse. Thankfully for him, he's on the play. He's got to get this game over with. Exactly. And you saw, uh, it, fittingly enough, we coming into a second game here where Jonathan was on the play and Jesse conceding to wingmate rock, among other cards. Huh. Uh, once the game gets to that spot, Jonathan has a very big edge. Game number three about to be underway here. Again, whoever wins this match, see him in the top eight. Mm -hmm. Jesse, got to get off to that fast start here, given Jonathan's build of this deck. Wingmate Rock is so hard for an opposing opposite aggro deck to beat. Looks like Delano's going to take a mulligan. Jesse with a very threat light hand. Only a Rock Shots a Death Dealer, but two removal spells. He can cast the Death Dealer on the second turn as he has a Black Source of Mana and a Windswept Heath. So, so this hand's a keep, but if Jonathan's able to answer the Death Dealer, the game may go on for a very long time, and we know that Jonathan has an edge there. This is true. We'll talk very quickly about our IQs as Jonathan does shuffle, something that really helped a lot of our players qualify for the Players' Championship. You get some sweet stuff, playmats, dice bags, pins, all that cool stuff. Yeah, you can scale this experience to whatever you're looking for. If you just want some more local organized play, some more big tournaments in your store to play in, these IQs provide that. If you're trying to qualify for the Invitational, well, they're called Invitational Qualifiers for a reason. And if you're trying to get all the way to the Players' Championship, many players like Kevin Jones, uh, Stephen Mann, Logan Mize, they use these IQs to good effect. All these kits come with exclusive playmats, dice bags, pins, and SCG premium vouchers. Some of these are given away to everyone who competes. Some of them are for top eight prizes only, and you can find out more information over at StarCityGames.com. see if Jonathan's happy with his six cards. Happy enough. Game number three underway here. And the Ops on Aggro Mirror, just a windswept heath here for Jesse. Delano with the Sansep Citadel. Brogan will take a draw. We'll sacrifice that Heath. Search up a forest to go along with his Caves of Koilos. And this will be a Rashasha Death Dealer. Pass a turn back over to Delano. Let's see what he wants to go with here. 
got himself a death dealer of his own. He'll have to pay a life to cast it too. Could have played Urborg that turn, elected not to, and might get paid off big time for that play because I do not believe Jesse has a second black mana to go with the hero's downfall in his hand. Jonathan willing to play and take a point of damage, play a land of war waste and take a point of damage to prevent Jesse from potentially being able to play a double black spell. Jonathan doesn't even know if they're, you know, he could easily have a black source of mana and be able to cast the spells, but uh, that gamble there paid off big time because Jesse just can't cast the stuff in his hand right now. Yeah. Wants so to be sacrificed. Jesse wants to make sure he knows what land he wants to grab. It looks like he's gone past a plains. So it looks like he's in search of a forest, and he is. Boy, the mana base in this deck is ugly sometimes, I tell you. <laughs> no kidding. Jesse has Nissa in hand. Yep. You're just pulling yourself in multiple different directions every game. There's a murderous cut. That's to get the Death Dealer off of the table. He has to take one to cast that. We'll see if it comes back to hurt him that he didn't search for a planes there. Though he does have a planes in hand. So. Yeah, he's, he's got white mana in hand. He's got Nissa. He has to go get a forest here. It's just more of an indictment on the mana of this deck in a general sense than any critique of Jesse's play. Temple of Silence and a passing of the turn. Delano does keep the top card on top and a fence of the draw here for Grogan. He'll attack with his Death Dealer. No pumps, just two points of damage will come across. It's a planes. It's a point of damage. I think it'll be an Anafenza, and it is. And this is exactly what Jesse needs to do. Just get on top of Jonathan. Yep, and Jonathan there really needed Valorous Stance. That's the best way to break serve in that spot. And now uh, Jonathan very far behind. Temple, which means no Siege Rhino. Top card to the bottom. Pass that turn back. Grogan will draw. Tassiger. Attackers, yes, trigger. Jonathan Delano, you need something, my friend. Well, saving grace here is I don't think Jesse has much of a follow-up. There's Obzon Charm. Four damage will come across. His hand is spells that are too expensive or double black spells. So yep. his hand's locked up right now. An offense of the draw here for Delano. He'll play his Anafenza. Doesn't have to take any damage to cast that. There's Temple. Top card. Stays on top. Pass it back. Take a draw. Siege Rhino. Not bad. Attacker. Is there a blocker? I feel like Jonathan's... This is a risky gambit. I mean, this is a big hit to take. There's the Rhino. I think that Jonathan, if he knew about the Rhino, would have blocked. Jesse didn't play it last turn, so it had to be drawn this turn, but not blocking there. Pretty pretty rough now. If he was not blocking because of the Wingmate Rock, if he has a Wingmate Rock, this is also really bad because it means that if he attacks with the Anafenza to trigger Raid, well, he's just throwing the Anafenza away. And the Wingmate Rock isn't particularly great on this board along with the token. Right, it's a 4-4 four, four and a 4-5, so that Wingmate Rock, uh, that Siege Rhino rather off the top was perfect for Jesse. Both because of its raw power and because it was concealed. There's a Siege Rhino there for Jonathan, however, which is pretty nice. Though, again, if Jesse is able to find another black mana, this could get ugly. I don't know if Jonathan wants to play the Urborg, and he doesn't yet. Rogan will draw. Siege Rhino number two. Here come the beatdowns. Trigger, put a counter there. There's a block. There's a block. Pretty straightforward. That'll be exiled as well. There's a follow-up siege, Rhino. That's a beaten. Mm -hmm. And Jesse doing whatever he can. I mean, he can't cast a lot of spells in his hand, but he's doing his best to make sure that Waymate Rock is not a disaster if it shows up. Yep. Jonathan untaps, attacks, and plays Wingmate Rock. He's kind of in chump blocking territory. The Siege Rhinos are just too large. Yeah, there's a little bit of trample damage. You see players making sure the life totals are correct here. Anafenza jumped in front of that Siege Rhino. Anafenza has four toughness. Rhino has five power now thanks to the Anafenza. So making sure everything's sorted out okay as Lena will draw a card. Pass that turn back. We'll see if he has a removal spell. Grogan will draw. 
It's a windswept teeth, which is terrible. It's not another black source of mana, but it does allow for some attacks, and there's an extension of the hand. Jesse Grogan going to win this match over Jonathan Delano. Two games to one. Obzon Agro will take care of Obzon Agro, which means Jesse Grogan will be playing in our top eight.